Kimchi is a very giving cat, especially in the morning. In the morning, she gives me the runaround, crying as if her ginger tail is caught in a mangle. And I'm never sure if she wants fed, cuddled or let outside. A strange cat, this one, sometimes preferring a cuddle over food, enjoys being lifted up and carried like a baby in your arms, all purrs and push paws, only occasionally puncturing the cradler's skin with a too vigorous scratch from her pointy fierce claws. Kimchi is a very giving cat. Sometimes she leaves a present for me in the morning, a giant stinking cat turd, usually in her litter tray, occasionally outside of it, radiating my nostrils, making me want to gag as the cat catches in my feet, crying for something or nothing or both. And when I say thanks for the present of your poo to her, she does not get the irony in my tone because what I'm actually saying is I'm not grateful for this morning's smell from hell. We first set eyes on Kimchi at Ben Varden Animal Rescue Shelter when the family were on the hunt for a new cat. Our previous cat, Rosie, had run out of working organs and I had done the necessary and taken her to the vet to be put down. I was reluctant to get another cat but the family were of another opinion. At Ben Varden, we looked at all the young kittens who, sensing they needed to put on a show to get out of their cage, were doing cartwheels and jazz hands to impress. We kept on looking, finally coming across a large sleepy ginger around three years old. She's a bit anxious, says the Ben Varden volunteer as we hold her. She's mostly lived outdoors, sorry, indoors. The as yet unnamed ginger cat, soon to be christened Kimchi, allowed herself to be lifted into Joanne's arms and gave an understated performance of quiet purring. Joanne said this one, and that was that. And that was how Kimchi, named after a type of Korean food and a drag artist, was born into our lives. Kimchi is a very giving cat. She likes to share her anxiety with us, and she does this by spraying her foul-smelling scent, like piss on steroids, on our curtains, on our doors, on our bags sitting on the floor with shopping in them, on beach blankets and duvets, on freshly washed clothes. I would come into the kitchen all happy and be suddenly accosted in the nostril region with this heady stench, thinking, what's that smell? Does a bin need cleaned? Why not wash my pits? But we very quickly learned to reorganize and recognize and diagnose the source of this diabolical fragrance. I began to have second thoughts about this confused mog. Could we take her back? Would she be labelled difficult to live with and have to be put down, unable to shake off her stigmatising reputation? I'm difficult to live with and I don't want to be put down or sent away from the family, but I'm mostly house trained these days. More second thoughts, could we train her? Could we take her to a cat therapist? Was there a drug treatment? Could we have our sense of smell surgically removed? A friend in Canada suggested cat nappies. I don't know if such things exist. We eventually got a plug-in device for the wall, not her bum, that apparently emits some kind of good vibe smell for cats. Generally, I think kimchi is too giving. Too giving of all the wrong things, anxiety spray, morning shit, unconsolable crying. The family disagree. The family thinks she is part of the family. The family thinks she has had a hard life and they will look after her. When it comes to the cat, I think the family consider me a heartless block of granite, but they don't clean the litter tray. Last week, Kim Chi developed an ear thing. As you can hear from my description of her symptoms, I am not a trained vet. 
Her ear thing was a sore looking lump the size of a large grape, which seemed to be growing larger by the hour. Her ear was also growing balder by the day as she tried to scratch her infected itch. No jokes here about earwigs, please. And she had hissed at me like a riled rattlesnake when I accidentally touched her sore bap of an ear. The family were growing anxious at the obvious pain displayed by their cat. I was predicting a large vet bill. And I could also predict what was going to happen next. And lo and behold, I was delegated to take a closer look. I steeled myself and then slowly, gently explored the patient. It was a mess, red inside and out with a growing lump on her balding ear. Kimchi was not a happy cat. I tried to evade her teeth and claws as she wriggled to get free of my clinical investigation. I rubbed some salve and the sore. A brother-in-law from a farming background was consulted. He said, no amount of cream would help. He said, the wound needs the sound of that. So we put more cream in her ear. The lump got larger and more ugly. They became more jumpy, unsettled, off her food. We had to make a decision, go to the vet or try some DIY surgery. I thought about the vet's bill and decided on the DIY approach. And so it was that Joanne gathered kimchi and an old black towel, held her paws firmly in place and waited for me to do the deed. Not a dirty deed. I had sterilized a needle. St. Francis, give me courage. St. Luke, patron saint of surgeons, come to the aid of my shaking hands. I approached the cautious cat, edged slowly toward Kimchi, beloved family cat, the cat that I could take or leave. She gave me a slit-eyed Clint Eastwood stir that would have stopped a lesser man, but I am made of granite. I could do the tough love thing because I was solid. I moved closer with my sharp sterilized needle. Closer, I can do this. A quick job and that will be it. I can do this. I can't do this. I couldn't do it. I confess. I do have some feeling for this molting ginger mess. I don't want to hurt her unnecessarily. I don't want to hurt her out at all. I don't want to hurt you, Kimchi. I said, give me a minute, and I walked away. And again, the cat me with my finger. I brought the sterilized needle closer. At that moment, I realized just how slender a cat's ear actually is. There's nothing to them. I could push this needle right through her ear if I wasn't careful. Maybe dangle a dainty Christmas bell from her piercing. I touch her sliver of an ear with the needle, just a touch, nothing. No growling, but also no penetration of the skin. I need to put more pressure on her ear. I'm sorry, Kitten, I said to her under my breath. I walked away. I came back. Do it or don't. This is for your own good. Isn't that the phrase that has been used to justify a multitude of cruel abuses in life? I go in close again and I stick the needle in. The cat wails and struggles to escape. Joanne holds firm. I am putting on a brave face, but also, I also want to wail. I look at her ear. A small ooze of bloody brown liquid has appeared. Had I done it? I squeeze your ear and two things come out. Another trickle of ooze and a milk curdling wail from kimchi. It didn't matter. I was done. I couldn't do any more. If it didn't work, it was time for the vet. I administered more cream on her oozing ear and we put her to bed, hoping in recovery for the cat and for us. I felt sick from putting on a brave face while inside I was quivering with fear and concern. 
it had worked. The next morning, Kim Chi was in much better form and the lump on her baldy ear was significantly reduced. Hallelujah. And the day after that, she was even more improved. She was on the mend. Hurrah. The family were relieved. The cat was relieved. And me, I had to reluctantly admit that I had more than just feelings of frustration for Kim Chi, that hurting her even for her own good was hurting me and that we had a connection beyond the domestic drudgery of feeding, cleaning and opening doors. Or maybe the connection was strong because of those quotidian moments, those daily encounters. Damn, connections can be a real pain. Thanks very much, Paul. My God, wonderful. Um, and congratulations to you. Like I should say, you have sent us a photograph of the ear post Hutchinson surgery, and we're going to put it up. But I think anybody who doesn't want it's not that disgusting. It does look like a slightly sore yeah, ear. Yeah, public warning. Public warning. Yeah, public yes, warning is that like leave the audio on, but turn close your eyes for a few seconds while I share this photo. And um, if you don't want to see it, here we are. It's coming up in three, two, one. Here it is. Oh, look at that. Poor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's coming down now for anybody who does who wants to open their eyes. There you are. Paul, I'm kind of amazed. How how can you hold? Was it you or Joanne or both of you that held the cat still? Like, how can anyone hold a cat still? Well, we've done this before. So Joanne holds holds her in a blanket. And then I do the, you know, uh, I've been retraining that I've, you know, done over many years. You know. uh, Blanket is a clever way of doing it. Oh my God, yeah, poor cat. Yeah, it also saves you from scratches. <laughs> I'm sure. It's just awful though. I mean, you know, you're, you hope you're doing the right thing. I know. Awful. 